We're here at Unpub 3 with Josh Temkin of uh, Table Treasures, is your group over in Maryland, right? Table Treasures is the uh, game design group. Right. Yeah. Table Treasures is the game design group, so he's a core group of designers that uh, have been very supportive of us. Uh, he's a, a founder of a company, uh, Tall Tower. Tall Tower Tall Games. Tower Games. And he's here to talk about uh, one of his big games, which is Throne Dice. So, Josh, tell us about Throne Dice. All right. Well, it's, um, it's a dexterity-based game uh, involving uh, resource management and politics. Um, in the game, the players are minor nobles uh, building castles out of dice, stacks of dice. Um, the game gets its name from the fact that uh, you'll build the dice and stacks in your throne room, and the, the more dice you have and the higher their stack, the more points they're worth, uh, and you check that at the end of the game. And so you want to have the most points in your throne room at the end of the game. Um, and I think you can see that we've got a castle wall here, there's actually a little icon on the mat um, for the castle wall. You'll need castle wall as defense because the attacks in this game use a siege tower. Uh, don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's basically a Chessex dice tower with all the insides removed. And the attack works like this. You take the uh, siege tower, you put it right up against the front of somebody else's castle, and then you throw the attack dice down and knock stuff off. And that's basic idea. Uh, except you gotta have uh, better aim than me, and you can throw as many dice as you want. Uh, and there's some cool techniques that you can use. There you go. That's the game. That's it. It's, it's just messing things up and throwing stuff all over the floor. That's that's what people love about it. Yeah, lots of people uh, you know talk about crossbows and catapults and all that kind of stuff. Um, actually, the, this game came out of... Uh, a game design challenge I issued to my group, which basically came from a shape that I saw in stonework at St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Um, yeah, it's basically uh, this kind of shape with uh, actually a third piece here. But anyway, um, this game has uh, cards. You can uh, hire courtiers to, uh, to help you in your quest. Um, you've got on the mat, you've got craftsmen, which will help you on a build turn. They make it easier to build things. Uh, knights will give you more attack dice. Um, and let's see, so you'd have one of two types of turns, either a build turn or an attack turn. Mm -hmm. And build turn, you're going to roll your dice, and depending on the combos you get, you can put more stuff into your castle. The game will end if somebody runs out of dice in their supply. Um, on an attack turn, you know, you're attacking and knocking stuff off. You can throw many dice at one guy at a time. You can throw dice here and then move to somebody else. Um, and that's sort of where the politics in the game comes in, because you want to talk people out of attacking you. Yes, you want to convince them to attack somebody else. That's right, because <laughs> the, the points you have in your throne room only matter at the moment the game ends. And so you want to make sure that the game ends on your terms when you have the most most points. Something that um, it, when, I, when I played this and I, I really appreciated about the game is that uh, and this was, I first discovered this one when I was first discovering games like Alien Frontiers and Twa yeah. where you know, you're using dice for so many different things. They're, they're your, uh, your currency and everything. These, and that's what's going on here. These are your, these are your building blocks. They're right. your currency to, to buy yep. and sell things. They're your attack. The dice yep. do everything. So you've really got to make a decision based on... You know, with it's a, it becomes such such a difficult resource management thing, with you know, what you got to do. I have to build that defense. I have to build that wall, so I protect this. But I have to build that, and it it becomes it becomes an interesting choice in how everybody's making their choices for that. I mean, it's, yeah, it's been yeah. a long it's been a long weekend, so I'm starting to, I'm, start, I'm starting to not yeah. make sense. So no, no, that, that my apologies sense. to the viewers at home as well. It made sense to me, <laughs> but of course I'm as tired as John. Um, but one of the interesting things that happens in this game is as people um, go through the game, uh, and of course 
as I said, we're minor nobles, so we aren't always paying taxes to the king, so that's a drain on the dice out of the game. But as people get near the end of their supply, uh, there becomes this pressure on the other players to attack them, because attacking will put dice back into their cups so that they can't end the game. Right. So if you're behind, you'll often want to attack the leader to put dice back into his cup so that the game doesn't end. And therein is some of the, pol the politics, convincing other people to attack the leader yeah. so that you don't have to. So it's it's a game with a, with a lot of dice, but it, it's not a whole lot of luck going on. There's a lot a lot more to it. There's a lot of choice. You know, and that was that was something that I, I got on to early on as well. That you know, you do roll, you do have to make choices based on what you roll, but you know, that's not the core of it. All of it's how you use it. All of my games that have luck have ways to mitigate luck because I hate having a carefully constructed position destroyed by a random roll. Um, and so in this game, you've got dice rolls, but there are lots of ways to spend the dice. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of ways to do that. Um, the cards will give you alternate ways to, to uh, alternate costs, basically. So in this game, you'd need a pair in order to uh, buy a knight. Right. But uh, if you bought one of these, if you bought the squire card, it'll cost you one to buy, which you can pay now, and then you hold it in hand, and you can pay two dice later with that don't have to be a pair to get to get a knight. And so we've got alternate mechanics and mechanisms for costing to mitigate that luck. Uh, and there's lots of ways to do it. The craftsman is another way to mitigate the luck because you can add this craftsman to your roll after seeing the roll. You can add it to the roll as any value you want. So you have to invest to get those craftsmen, yeah. but then you can use them to your advantage. So there's yeah. all sorts of ways to mitigate luck. All kinds of future planning there. That's good. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's the craftsman. That's a, yeah, cool. So um, we were here at, uh, at Unpub 3 this weekend, uh, played a whole bunch of games of this. Uh, this basic game is pretty solid. Uh, we've been, in particular, working with expansion material, so i show you some of that. Sure. Um, we've got uh, events, and so we've got a, a small deck of events. So these will introduce uh, another way to end the game. Uh, players can be overtaken by events. We'll have a, a number of these, and I'll show you the other side in a sec. Um, Shuffle them up, remove one so that there's eight. When all eight have resolved, the game will also end. Um, but these guys will often pull dice out of uh, supplies or off the mats. Um, and so an example would be uh, the king wants you to help him fight a foreign war. And so, you know, you have to pardon my graphics, but that means that everybody pays two dice to the king, either from their knights or their throne room. And so if you have, uh, look at this guy here. Um, this guy would have a choice. He could pay two knights to the king, uh, or he could take out of his throne room whatever he thinks is going to suit mm -hmm. him best. This guy, on the other hand, uh, the green guy, doesn't have any knights, so he would have to pay out of the throne room. I mean, after all, if the king wants knights and you don't have them... Yeah, you've got to give him something. Yeah. Um, so they, uh, they can end the game uh, that way. There are other things. Now I should show you the die. So we add an event die, which is a larger die that has a really cute fairy on the one side, uh, the number six, and a really tiny dragon for the one. Um, and uh, so this will be added to your build roll, so you'll actually get an extra resource to roll. And if it comes up either the six or the one, that's when you draw the event cards. And some of the cards will have two sides. Oops, uh, I got to hold it up there, right? And so you would do the dragon side or the fairy side, depending on on which side that came up. I was gonna say, I, I vaguely remember that. So I think I played it at some point with the uh, with the events, or at least seen them and talked about the dice, because the dice I, I remember the the sides with the fairies and things like that. So that's, that's cool. Yeah, actually, the events were um, the events have been with the game for a long time, uh, and then we realized actually it plays fine without them. Got it. But they can come back in if somebody wants a more complicated, That's right. a more a more complex, not complicated right. uh, game that, that has. I got it. Cool. Yeah. So it, it's a little bit of randomness. It's it's a lot of fun, um, and uh, there are ways to you know it, it's going to target sort of everything on the board, so it encourages keeping everything got it. full. Uh, some of the other expansion material that we're working on are um, buildings. 
so these, uh, you know, here's a farming field and a statue and a workshop and a courtyard. These would give you permanent effects that you could use once a turn. Um, the North Studio and the South Studio are kind of interesting. They let you turn a craftsman into a zero or a seven so that you can get much longer straights. Um, this one is a uh, is a lot of fun for especially for new players. The training grounds. Training grounds. It says if you if your last attack did not hit anything in in the the uh, defender's castle, you get an extra attack dice. It's sort of like a mulligan. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And so these guys will also have some victory points on the bottom that can't be taken away. So even if your even if your throne room is empty, you just still have victory get points. Some points. And we have had cases where uh, the winner of the game won based on these. He got knocked out on his throne room. <laughs> nice. nice. Um, and that's, that's that's good level of protection for somebody who just can't seem to get build a good wall. Yeah. So they, I got you. Yeah. Well, um, well, Josh, thank you. Uh, did, did you have something else? No, we just lots of uh, lots of other ideas that we've been playing with, and uh, it's a, a really neat system. We had a lot of people laughing. People laugh over both the misses and the hits. And, I, I always I always enjoy that about this is uh, is the energy that is around the table when this game is being played. One of my favorite photos from some previous unpubs in, involve you with your looking at, looking at the dice, trying to plan it with it with the with the dice boot. Yeah, you can't see you can't see the face I was making. I'm oh. sorry, and it's probably better for you for those of you at home. But um, you know, just playing with this guy, watching now. It's not even in the thing, but that's cool. But anyway, yeah. I, 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 I always enjoy when I know Throne Dice is coming. I know we're going to get some good shots, and right. people are going to have a good time with it. Yeah. So. so you can edit in that picture from later, because it's up on your I website, I think. No, I don't have that picture anymore. Oh, well, I do. Oh. So, so look at the bottom of your screen. You should see a link appearing now. <laughs> right, John? Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll put a link. Um, so we'll, we'll be able to find the picture. We'll just put it in there. This has been a, a great experience for me uh, at the Unpub, it's a delight to get to meet a whole bunch of other players and a whole lot of other designers. Um, one of the other fellows who, who attends, uh, we've started a collaboration on, on another game, and so it's been a lot of fun. Okay. And uh, if you're not here, you should be. So. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, Josh, very much thank you for, for the endorsement and thank you for coming, as always. Uh, we, we appreciate seeing what you got. And uh, everybody from your group, the support that's been, been given to us has just been, been phenomenal. So thank you and have yourself a great day. Uh, you've probably got enough time for maybe one more play test out there, so, so get out there. and get Yeah, this, oh, is well, running, this is running playing. 5 o'clock. So. Say, cool. Then you've got enough time to get out there and get it set up. 18 minutes. 18 cool. minutes. All right. It doesn't take Thanks. quite that long, but thank Thanks. you. Take care.